<laughs> sometimes it become overwhelming and I don't want people to be overwhelmed. I'm extremely overwhelmed. Hey everyone, welcome to The Spirited Body. I'm James Baker, psychic, sometimes medium, channeler, intuitive. Um, and I'm here to share with you the messages that my guides give me about how to live easier as a spiritual being on the physical planet Earth. And uh, I'm here with my really good friend, Katie. Hello. I am not psychic as a... As a... <laughs> I'm going to say that every time. <laughs> Sorry. Tell me, um, how are you? I'm doing good. Yeah. This, this week has been... This week has been, uh, you know, uh, I feel like I had a session with my energy worker and I'm like, I'm, I'm just feeling like I'm trying so hard and I feel like my my efforts aren't going anywhere. And she was like, I think you need to not do that. <laughs> She's like, your life lesson is continuously to like try harder and get better results, but actually it's not really how it works. So if you could just chill out a little bit. And then I said, you know what? I'm just going to chill out a little bit. And then everything felt easier. Ooh. Is that surprising? It, what a shock. Yeah. Well, I don't try as hard and things are easier. I get, you know. The life lesson. It, I was laughing because sometimes I just feel so much pressure, especially with my business. And, and so does my partner. And this week we were both just in the pressure cooker. And then I said, you know what? I think we need to take a, we need to take a step back and realize that like, we're on our way to something that that requires more capacity. And if we keep feeling like we're in the pressure cooker at this stage of the game, we'll never be able to advance to the next stage of the game because we're not open to that. And so, like, in other words, like, the problems that we say we're having are, like, nothing to somebody else, and we need to be prepared to be a little bit more expansive in our perception. And so then that night, I went and I said, normally I don't, Recently, I haven't been watching a lot of TV. I don't know why that is, but that night I wanted to watch something. And I said, let's turn on Netflix and see. And then there was like this documentary about Elon Musk's uh, adventure and, you know, his venture in building SpaceX. And so we watched that and I was just laughing I, because we're like, we were just having this dialogue about the pressure cooker and all this. And then it's like, you know, he had a hundred million dollars when he exited PayPal and he said, I can get three rockets into space. And if I can have one successful launch, then I could probably get a contract with NASA or some funding. And then we can like really go, go. My, my, my idea will really come to fruition, but I need to have one successful launch. So they take four years to build one rocket. It explodes. <laughs> and one of the head engineers said that when he went home every day after work. His wife said he didn't speak for two months. I mean, think about you're dedicating your life to like this, this rocket being successful for four years. So they took another year, they built one, exploded. And he's like, I got one more left in me. So he builds it, it explodes. He has a hundred thousand dollars left. He had a hundred million and now he has a hundred thousand. He somehow manages to get one last one built. And I just remember watching the video of the look in his eyes and the expression in his face and how his body was standing as the fourth rocket was launching. And I looked at my partner and I said, we know nothing about the pressure cooker. Our, it's, and then it was just like, it's all about perception. And yeah. I was meant to watch that at that time. But it, anyway, it was fascinating to me. And I really appreciate that you're watching that and it's changing your life and I'm spending my time watching the ultimatum. <laughs> what the fuck is that? And it's changing what my is it? life. What is, oh, it's changing your life. Okay, okay. Well, it's life changing. In a completely different way. It's, what is that? It's a it's a, a reality show on Netflix and it's such an escape. I I I I, I don't well, even know where to begin. It? It's it's couples which is just crazy to me that one person in the couple has given their partner an ultimatum, i.e. marry me oh, or we need to break up. Shit. And the funny part is they're the oldest person on the show is 26 
everyone is like 22, 23, 24, 25. So their prefrontal cortex is not <laughs> it's, fully developed. It's exactly. Glad we're on the same page. And they're like, you need to marry me now or I'm breaking up with you. And so they go Break up. Break up. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's the writing on the wall. So they so they go to gay, meet together and there's like four couples or I think there's four couples. Anyway, they um, spend three weeks dating each other. Oh, no, they spend one week dating each other. Then three weeks, they pick pick a different partner. They spend three weeks living with that other partner. And then they spend three weeks living back together with their original partner. And then at the end, they decide whether they're going to... The person who's issued the ultimatum gets to decide whether they're going to move forward. I don't, I don't know if I can do the podcast with you anymore. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, it's, it's horrible. But to watch, like, it's like a train wreck. How are you not going to watch what happens? And these people are all so... And I, I told Nathan, I'm like, do you know how good this makes me feel about our relationship? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's... That is, I didn't even know that type of plot could exist. Oh my God, it's crazy. It sort of stems from the Love is Blind family of, it's the same hosts. It's, it is a train wreck and a half and it is pure entertainment and no social value, no redeeming qualities I mean, I'll be honest, I'm all. not going to watch that. I don't think you should. I mean. <laughs> but I'm happy to hear about how it all turns out from your, from your perspective. <laughs> it's. Yeah, we, we do have a lot of fun watching it and just screaming at the screen why people aren't just saying how they feel. It's it, it's a good, it's a good, it'll make you feel great about your communication <laughs> skills. <laughs> Let me say that. But um, yeah, that that's what we're watching. Those make me feel a little bit worried for humanity and the future of our existence. And so, <laughs> no, like, I, I know we're laughing, but like, I'm dead fucking serious. Yeah, no, I mean, I could, I could definitely see that, but you know, um, but I need I, mean, I need a good I love break. The entertainment. I, yes, I need you. I need I need a break sometimes and uh, a lot of times, and it's just funny. Like it's it's uh so you get to have like major revelations in your life about <laughs> where you should be, and I get to watch uh, over drinking young people. Oh, but there's alcohol in the mix. Oh, there's so much alcohol in the mix, making crazy decisions that are completely societally placed and have no true bearing on anyone's true happiness or existence. Like, should you get married or not? And why? Is and it, I'm just going to say this. Ask the question real quick. Um, is it always the woman who's like... No, there's one guy that's like... Okay, 75% is women. It, yes. Okay. But um, I, I do have to say, or Nathan and I talk about this, is... Can we normalize in society that marriage is not the end goal of every relationship? Is that I, something we can normalize I, at all? I I actually don't know that we should get into this because I have a lot of things. <laughs> I don't know, like, like, I've gone, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I've ever told you this. So we're just going to air it out here. I've actually considered having like a legal divorce but staying with my partner. Because of how much I actually despise that construct. Institution. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, ugh. The quote unquote institution. It, it, it is an institution. And it's okay if people want that. Yes. But I do think it's critical that we understand what it is and consciously make a choice from that space rather than subconsciously or not really knowing what it is and making a choice from that. And I did make a choice from that space when I got married however many years ago that was, back in 2008. And it's not that I don't want to be with my partner, but I, I'm a little bit allergic to the, um, the, the system itself. And so I told myself I wasn't going to make any firm, my poor partner. He just, he just goes with like, he's, he's like, oh man, you pushed me a lot yeah. in my growth. Cause I'm just like a little bit like, you know? And, um, like he'll say something like sweet to our, our girls, like, oh, that outfit's really cute. I'm like, do not praise her appearance. And he's like, can you just give me a break? Can you just walk away for a second? Um, <laughs> I can't. I am, like, determined to not have little girls, like, feel like the end goal is marriage and their looks are every... Oh, dear God, I can't do it anymore. I, but I told myself I'm going to give myself a little bit of time in this space before I make a, a decision like that so that I'm not just be reacting. So, I but that may be down the line. Yeah. You might just be finding out about this for the first time, but it... I, I think it's... Uh, but I think it's reasonable because I, it doesn't seem reasonable to me that 
the expectation we put on marriage, and especially when you see it, and I mean, I think I had that expectation when I got married, that this was the next step and that this yes. step was going to somehow change you or change the relationship or now you now they said it all the time. I'm just ready to start my life. <gasps> Girl, your life has already started. You're, you're 23 years into it and you've got so much more life to live. This marriage isn't really going to change you and it's not going to change your relationship. Not you're, for the better. Anyway. You're going to have like yeah. fun planning and um, fun in quotes planning, but Girl, it's no. All for the image. And- no. So I would just like to put this out there. Let's normalize marriage not being the end goal of every relationship. I'm done. Like I, I again, I don't want to like say that I don't have respect for people who make that choice. I just would love for alignment in that's not the end goal. And everyone has a different choice. And we understand that it's an institution that we involve the government in. And that's fine. But, like, let's make the choice from that space, not from the space of, like, if I get this, I will feel happier. Actually, a lot of those things make us not happier at all. Because when you don't make decisions from who you are internally at your core, which may be to get married, um, it it rarely pans out well. Or so we're using it. I mean, and one of the things I observed, too, was um, that the, the view of marriage was you need to do this to prove how much you love me. You need to do this to commit to me. You need to, I'm like, girl, you don't need a ring or a piece of paper to tell you that. Or if you want a ring, fine, buy the person a ring. It, it, why, it, it's just so juvenile and so um, insecure. It, it, it was just, it, it's insane to me. And this is a huge tangent, but it, it's just, it was fascinating to, the show for me really highlighted not, and it, it highlighted that the way that we hold marriage in the society is so um, strange. Well, it's like my one of my best friends, who's also a dear friend of yours, Amy. Mm-hmm. She has been divorced for you know five years now or whatever, and people like treat her so different when like they see her as a single woman. And she's always like, people feel so sorry. Oh, okay. And she's like, bitch, I'm having the best Best, life I've ever had. Exactly. It's like so funny that people just put that perception on her that because she has children and she's doesn't, isn't married that like somehow her life isn't meaningful. And she, it's disgusting to me. And I'm like, she's like literally one of the happiest people I I know. know and, and is like living her life to the fullest and people just walk in and think that, oh, who are you? And I'm like, no, no. that's not it at all. No. Anyway, but you, you did get something from a reality show. <laughs> this, this all boils down to. It's, 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 yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's a great way to spend some time that you <laughs> don't care what happens to it. <laughs> hey, I don't value my time at all. What should I do? <laughs> Um, Okay, so uh, the topic this week (laughs) is on that note. uh, The topic this week is intuition. Mm. I mean, it is related, absolutely. Okay, I'm sure we'll wind our way there. No, I've already found it. Okay, Um, what do you think about that topic? What are your thoughts on that? Oh boy, I want to be mindful of the time for our listeners because this is a doozy. <laughs> this is a doozy. Yeah. Uh, I think that we are all born with a very strong intuition. And I think that our society just constantly turns that dial down. And I, whenever I think about intuition, I think about two dials next to each other and the one on the left is my intuition and the one on the right is what other people expect or think I should be doing and it gets real scary when the dial on the left is really on like level one or two and the dial on the right is like eight or nine and I think that it does speak to what we were just saying like with marriage and with expectations and it's like where are these decisions coming from which dial is turned up louder because you can't you can't turn the society. I mean, we have to live in our society. So, yeah, I, I struggle with this sometimes because I have been told by many people who are in my life that, whoa, you have really strong intuition. And I'm like, well, actually, I think we all do. So I'm not special or anything. But I do battle with this because 
I hear the intuition and then I also hear the other chatter. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have a very difficult time discerning between what is the intuition and what is the chatter and how do I get the dial on the right to turn down a little and the dial on the left to turn up. Interesting. I love everything you just said. And I I can't wait for you to hear what what they said about it. Um, So you use intuition a lot, you think? Um, I'm aware of intuition a lot. And I'm also more and more aware now than ever how I choose um, others' beliefs and desires over that intuition. Like, I'll give you an example. Love it. When my first daughter was really little... I had a strong intuition that her temperament and spirit and whatever needed more co-sleeping. Um, I did not want to co-sleep. My partner deeply did not want to co-sleep. <laughs> but I knew as a mother, my intuition was telling me. So I did it, but along the way, it was very, very rough. I let go of my expectations of it pretty quick, but my partner did not. And for years, he just kept, when is it going to, when are we going to move her in our room? When are, and I just kind of eventually, um, now she's in her own room and stuff, but eventually I did go back to him. And I said, I just want to check in with you after all these years. Um, it was actually really painful for me to go through that experience with you because I ignored my intuition for eight years. And I really wish that, you know, I could have been heard in that space a little bit more. So do you see what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, there's like these other messes. So I felt pressured the whole time to get her out. Like there wasn't just this like level of like, okay, this is what we feel is the best way to do it. And we're just going to lean in and trust that process rather than putting our own expectations and projections. So I just battle a lot with that, like being able to hear myself and knowing that's the right decision because I'm so afraid of upsetting other people or, and that's a, that's what I mean. Like this topic is really loaded for me because that is a very female place in society to keep the peace and stay you know, stay under the radar and like not, co- and oftentimes when we have to follow our intuition, we have to face some of those things. That's a very interesting perspective and understanding of it. Like sometimes when I follow my intuition, people are going to fucking be mad. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want that. I, I, I'll just not be authentic and turn my back yes. down more. Yeah. And I, but and what's interesting is I think, uh, that, that interplay where your self, your intuition, which will talk, which they will talk about as really just being you coming up against somebody else's expectation. Mm-hmm. Interesting. They don't really talk about that in this message. Um, but I think that's an interesting topic. And so keep it in mind. I think that's a good thing we can talk about as, as we're reading the message. Um, uh, also, I want to say, I'm going to just give a warning. I ha- had a little bit of a bug this week. So um, my channel isn't as smooth and as, uh, if you notice a difference in the clarity of it, I'm, it's because I wasn't really feeling 100%. In fact, I was feeling like 2%. <laughs> was this week, it was really not not good. Not good. Um, so... <laughs> um, it's just part of the process. It's part of the process. So, yeah. uh, uh, so if it's not as clear or it doesn't flow as smoothly, just give me a little bit of slack. Uh, I did my best. Uh, so, with that said, let's, let's do hear. It. I want to hear about this one. Let's hear what they have to say. So, this is coming from the Council of Light, back to uh, the group that really wanted me to do this podcast uh, to get their lessons out. So, from the Council of Light, thank you again for returning to us for information and guidance. We trust that the information we have provided has given clarity and relief for all that hear it. It is important to speak of these topics for a better understanding and inhabiting of the body that you use on earth in the physical plane. This knowledge will ease your existence and improve your ability to achieve connection and communion with those around you and yourself. Here is what we say to you. You alone are a valuable piece of existence. You would not be here if you were not. Your knowledge and action create the world that you live in and create the world for others as well. This is an important job, but it does not need to be heavy. Lightness is just as valuable as the heavy. Joy and ease are just as equal teachers as pain and a lot more pleasurable. We say this only to inform your decisions and improve the way that you approach your time here. You get to choose 
how it is experienced. That's so weird because in our last episode with the manifestation, we actually talked about like, we think it's so hard. And then I just talked about how my energy worker was like, you're making things too hard. Yes. So. This was, and this has come up for me because in my nine to five job as a physical therapist, um, I have some people, uh, it, it's funny working with the body for 26 years, 27 years, how much overlay there is between my spiritual work and spiritual lessons and how we treat our bodies. Are you kidding me? Has anyone, I'm going to just, I'm going to do a little tangent here about your physical therapy work. Because <laughs> it is not, like, people think, here's, here's my favorite thing about you. People think they're coming in for a physical therapy work. <laughs> they're not. Yeah. They're going to cry a lot. Yes. And did I tell a story on this podcast about how my father-in-law was in so much pain? And I said, oh, you got to go see my friend James. I don't want to. I don't want to. And I said, I'm bringing James to you. <laughs> so he had a, this problem in his hip or whatever. So I said, hey, James, would you mind coming over to my father-in-law's house? No, no, okay. No problem. I'll, I'll come by. So he came by. You took him outside. You did some exercises, but you didn't really say much. And... Um, You came back in the living room. He did not follow. And you said, I'll see you later. And I said, thanks so much. 30 minutes later, he came out of the room. And he was like, I don't know what happened. I've been crying for a half an hour. He didn't really say much. But I feel better. But I don't feel better. But why was I doing that? I can't get him to go back to you. But, um... You, you, you're not I've heard the stories of some of your patients yes. and they it is sad because they think they're coming in for- yes and and I do have a reputation at my work where people come in and they just cry and that's just something if, you don't, if people don't think that there's a connection between the spiritual realm and a physical body yes they, I mean, yes okay and live so in that fault. live in that lie but um, so one of the things that has been coming through is my patients uh, and some of them recognize, some people that are really in tune spiritually recognize immediately that that I have a connection and they can talk to me about these things. And I recognize sometimes people and I can talk to them about it. And it, so this, this has been repeated. This has been coming up for me over the past week to two weeks specifically, where people, you know, when I'm teaching them a movement or an exercise and and I'll say, don't go to pain, only move to where it's pain free. Don't move to where it hurts. And they can't, they hear it, but they don't think it's a value if they're not moving into the pain. Oh, the pain is where the problem is. Why Therefore, is that? but are they, we just addicted to suffering and pain? Like what, what, where are we getting these messages be, that go to the pain? I think I, well, you I know, don't know. I'm genuinely curious. Yeah. Well, you know, there's this idea in society, no pain, no gain. And I think that that is so subversive and so insipid in our society that it comes to emotional growth it comes to physical growth it comes to you know you're not going to be successful unless you work really hard you're not going to achieve what you want unless you work really hard you're not going to have a successful relationship unless it's really hard and trying you're not going to have a successful work uh you're not going to have a successful outcome and this this attitude we have toward you need to constantly be pushing up against suffering to learn your lesson you need to push up against suffering in order to gain. And that's specifically what they're speaking to is pain is a teacher. Sure. But what can you learn from pain that you can't learn from joy? Man. Yeah, I don't. And wouldn't it be better to go, it feels good to do this. So I'm just going to do what feels good rather than I need to constantly push up the shit that pisses me off and makes me angry, makes me sad and lonely and depressed and tired because that's where my growth is. I don't, given what they've said, I don't believe that's the case. And I'm not saying that we can't, that we aren't can experience frustration and anger and, and loneliness. And I think those are human emotions and that we, that's part of why we're here, right? To overcome those things. But man, it's a lot easier to go to where you feel joy. Your life is going to be a whole lot easier and you get to learn what you want by experiencing joy rather than learning what you don't want by experiencing pain. Like it. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I mean, and they just want us to keep that in mind. 
Okay. I mean, so you're not saying that, like, we should avoid the hard feelings. No. Okay. But make sure that you're feeling them for the right reasons. Because you need to. Because they're unavoidable. Not but that's where you find your... To it. Don't just go to it because that's where you think your go growth is. If it is presenting itself in that way, but don't don't manifest that emotion because you think that that's the way that you're going to learn the lesson. Yes. Be open to other ways of learning the same lesson. Yes. Okay. And the pain doesn't mean good all the time. Pain doesn't rarely, pain rarely means good, right? Like uh, we talked about it last week, that idea of that level of satisfaction that underlies even painful decisions. Mm-hmm. There's a satisfaction that, that goes along with things that are good for you, yeah. which is different. You know, like me extrapolating myself from that marriage and from that relationship and that sort of contract. That was painful, but it was satisfying. And so I wouldn't say the process was painful of disentangling and making those decisions and the back and forth and the feelings of insecurity, but there was that level of satisfaction. And that... I wasn't going to avoid those feelings. Yeah. But that doesn't mean... That there wasn't space for other things as well. Like like the joy of being on my own Mm -hmm. and um, the being able to make decisions for myself and learning about who I was and exploring who I was and being the father that I always wanted to be that I was not allowed to be. Mm -hmm. And those kinds of joys as the really what the lessons were. Mm. Okay. And so it's not that we can avoid pain, but we certainly don't need to look for it. Yeah. That's not where the lesson is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And it's, and it's, I mean, it's very different than I think all of us have been taught. So yeah. I have to sit with it. Yes. For the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I just thought it was a really good message that they seem to be thinking that's a, that's a, pervasive thing in the world right now. It's, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's suffering that COVID and all, all that bullshit. I think people have this level of expectation of discomfort now Mm -hmm. and they just want us to know your life doesn't have to be uncomfortable. Uncomfortable doesn't mean you're growing. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's a lesson, but it's not like the way to don't look for it. Like if you're, if you're comfortable and you're happy and you're living your life, that doesn't mean you're, you're static. Yeah. You can learn just as much from being happy as you can from being in pain. I mean, that's, should we just end it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Now let us move on to the topic that we came here to speak on, intuition. This is a topic that is meant to increase your understanding of who you are. It is important to understand that you are connected to the spirit world because you are a spirit. You are always connected to us. We overlap. You cannot separate from us. It is as if you are a test tube filled with the energetic representation of you, your soul. That energetic structure vibrates with the frequency of the spiritual side of the universe. You carry this connection with you always. As we have discussed before, this connection can be heard or ignored. You can choose to pay attention to this or you can let that part of you be overshadowed by the concerns of the physical world around you. This is an important fact to understand. You cannot lose your connection to us. It does not go away. You can merely overlook its presence. Why is this important to understand? It is because you need to have greater trust in your presence as a spiritual being. You need to fully embrace and know that you are here as a spiritual being embodying a physical body. Do you understand the power in knowing that? Knowing that you are never lost from the spiritual, that you are always connected? This will help you understand that the knowledge and answers that you seek are inside of you. They exist within you. In fact, you possess the entirety of the universe inside of you. This may seem like a large amount of knowledge and responsibility, but it is the truth. I, um, I, I believe you, <laughs> but I don't know what to do with it. Sometimes I need like a one-liner after something like that for you can bring it all together for me? There's a lot here. So I think when you talk about there being two knobs Mm -hmm. and you say the intuition knob is turned way down and the physical world knob is turned way up, Mm -hmm. there is no intuition knob. There's always, it's always set as a 10. 
So how can I not hear it sometimes? Because it's your physical knob that's turned up or down. The intuition knob can't change. Mm -hmm. Well, that is just deconstructed like a decade <laughs> of visualization in my mind. <laughs> so it's gonna all I I Okay, so if intuition is turned up to a ten at all all the time, but then this physical realm is turned up to a ten too, is it louder? It can be. I think so you cannot you cannot limit your connection to the other side. You cannot connect, you cannot lose your connection to the spiritual world because you are spirit. Okay. Which means you're absolutely connected to it. You can't, you can't cut it off. Okay. And that was a whole paragraph was like, we need you to understand this. This does not go away. It does not stop. It does not get smaller. It is constantly open. Whether you pay attention to it or not is the only thing that changes. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sit with this for a while. Yeah, I, it's like you're living in a room and you have a doorway. That door is always open. Yeah. There's you always have that light shining in, that air coming in. But are you looking at the door or are you looking at the picture on the wall? I'm probably looking at the picture. On the wall. <laughs> Help me. So. That's one. And the second piece of that is because you are always connected to the higher realm, higher plane, the spiritual world, you have access to the entire universe. The entire universe exists with inside of you. All the knowledge, all the connection, the peace, all of the unity exists with inside of you. And this is going to be, I don't know if I should talk about this. I don't know if it's going to be a topic for later on for them, but you know, when people talk about source. Yeah. Well, I had a conversation with source a few years ago. I know it's weird, but people, I think use source as a um, substitute for using the word God okay. an understanding of the word God. Okay. But source is not a consciousness. Source doesn't have its own consciousness. Source is simply the point at which everything in the universe converges or overlaps. Every single thing in the energy that is inside of it coalesces at one point, and that is source. Source contains everything. There's no contradiction at that point. There's only same. I, it's a lot. It's a, I feel like, yeah. I mean, I've never done acid before, but I feel like if I did, <laughs> that's what this exchange in this moment feels like. That is really insane. It is. So the reason people view it as a consciousness is because it contains everything. There's no contradiction because everything exists in it. So you can't have contradiction. And because nothing can exist in it, I mean, contradiction can't exist in it. It's all the energy moves in one direction. All, everything is flowing exactly the same way. It's a, it's a weird concept and I can't quite fully explain it. All I know is yes. if it's, it's not a consciousness, okay. it's just the point at which everything in the universe touches. So, and we have access to that because we're a part of it. I, that's, a, I mean, that's a lot. It, it is a lot. And there's a little bit of a diver divergence, yeah. but that's what they mean. We have the entirety of the universe inside of us. Okay. We are never cut off from it. It's not like, oh, you forsaken me. Uh-uh. That's bullshit. That doesn't happen. Okay. So I'm reading another book this week. <laughs> I'm going to open it because I feel like I don't, I just, I want to say it, but I haven't finished it, so um, it's called Zero Limits, and I, again, I haven't finished it, but essentially there was this, I don't know if he was a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I don't really know, but he was working in, 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 in Hawaii, in the state of Hawaii, 
uh, in an institution where people were basically like kind of they were written off. They were like cri- like criminal, a, like criminally insane. Like mental institution. Yeah, but like they probably had also committed crimes too. So they're like, we don't really care to rehabilitate you. This is in Hawaii, you said. Yes. And a spirit worker goes in. Well, he would. I think he was actually. I think. He has a PhD. Like, I think he had like legit credibility as well. I mean, not to say that. It's yeah, not no, no, I understand what you mean. Societal legit cre- credibility, yes. and he didn't actually meet with any of them. He just read their charts and connected to self and healed self, healed those parts of himself that were expressing in them, and healed them, and they were like functioning humans in society again. And my mind actually can't comprehend that, but I kind of think that's what you're talking about. Kind of. Because the diff- the other concept is, okay, this is a big one. And I, I, I don't like putting these sort of bombs out there because <laughs> sometimes they become overwhelming and I don't want people to be overwhelmed. I'm extremely overwhelmed right now. <laughs> do you want me to even say it? I don't know if you want me to just, say it. Just do it. That, you know, the concept, okay, we are, we are everyone. Okay. Like there really is no difference between you and me. I feel like I should have been more mentally prepared. <laughs> we are I'm trying too hard. I just gotta let it go. Well, we are everyone, so we are all connected to the same spiritual, energetic place that really has no differentiation. Okay. So we are everybody, and the idea of us having past lives. Yes. Right. Um, that's not how how we traditionally think of it is not accurate. And this is just sort of branching off the same topic. And I, th- I think that they want us, me to talk about this later on. But um, past lives is not like you have a limited number of past lives. It's not like, oh, I only have 1,200 past lives or eight past lives. or That's not the way it works. All of those lives are existing at the exact same moment. And you've tried to share this with me before, and I'm still, I feel like we got to go back to the, I, I'm going to have a mental breakdown in this episode. <laughs> I'm here for it. Okay. I'm not here, here to pick up the pieces. Little hot dog is guy <laughs> coming to me from a minute. Like I, so my point is, we are everybody. And what he's doing is he's recognizing the sameness. And he's tapping into the sameness of each other. Mm. And so by doing that, he can heal someone else because he's healing that in himself. I mean, isn't that insane? I mean, I thought, okay, here's another insane thing is I have heard about this theory before and I've always been fascinated by it. Like I've heard about this guy, didn't know what the book was called, didn't know what the method was, didn't know anything about it. And then um, a couple, like a week ago, um, a friend of mine was talking about how she was really healing some stuff in her. And then she was noticing things in other people that she had previously had some different things, you know, some disagreements with or whatever. And that they were kind of coming around in a new way. And I was like, oh, it reminds me of this thing I heard. And then a couple days later, I was finishing up my other book. And in the, the one I talked about in the last episode, The Universe is Talking to You, in that book, she brought up this guy after I had just talked about it with my friend. So then now I bought this book. <laughs> but it's weird how the universe works in that way. Like it was all ready for me to, so to hear. I do feel like the universe wants me to hear this, even though I feel like my brain is not computing. But I get what you're saying, but I don't get what you're saying. Um, but it's fascinating. I mean, it really is to, it, every episode, we just go back to the the connection with self and the, the love of self and the, I mean, it really, is that the foundation for it all? Yes. Yeah. Done. Thank you for joining the Spirit of Body. <laughs> this is our final episode and we have nothing left to share. Um, yes, to all of it. And uh, I was with a, um, I was taking a training uh, in mediumship and uh, the instructor was talking about you know, you can't really recognize or heal um, in the spirit world or with others, which you have not recognized in yourself. I mean, in a way, it's extremely powerful and liberating. It means that we have no justification to be the victim of a circumstance. Is that okay to say? Like, like 
we have so much power in our own ability inside to feel peace and freedom and forgiveness and healing that it actually doesn't take an active participant in order for that to happen. Correct. Yes. We can free ourselves from the, when this person does this, I can then feel this. Yes. That's a very powerful, liberating concept. To, it, and it should to be. It sh- yes, it should be a scary one. It should be a, wow, what's happening externally is really just happening internally. That's a lot. I'm ready to end that. <laughs> I'm ready to go home. You're like, I don't want to learn about intuition anymore. <laughs> Okay, go Okay, on. let's keep going. Okay. Uh, let me just read the last couple sentences. Sure. This will help you understand that the knowledge and answers that you seek are inside of you. They exist within you. In fact, you possess the entirety of the universe inside of you. This may seem like a large amount of knowledge and responsibility, but it is the truth. Hear us when we say to you that your intuition simply is the ability to attune yourself to your spiritual self. The art in listening and discovering your intuition is not about turning it on. You cannot turn it off. It is about how you are able to hear. Do you recognize when it is speaking to you? Do you listen to it? Do you follow what it is saying? Holding on to the awareness of your eternal connection to the spiritual side will allow you to trust that you are a receiver of information. Your references to gut feelings and little voices in your head are your recognition of this energetic connection. This connection is always present and talking to you, informing you. When something happens in your life, it can vibrate with the knowledge in your connection to the whole universe and to your higher self. So something happens externally. Okay. That incident, message, song, phrase, person vibrates at the same frequency as your higher self okay. or as part of your higher self. And that's when your intuition will, that's what you feel. Mm, okay. So the intuition is the message from the higher self. It, yes. In the form of just connection. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm going to vibrate like this out here and it vibrates inside. And when you feel it, that's just that connection. That's what intuition is. It's resonating externally with what is happening with you internally. Whoa. Okay. That feeling is the connection speaking and informing you. Now, it is important to understand that sometimes when you, what you interpret as your intuition your, or your feelings can be affected by relationships, relationships and attachments on the physical plane. And I think this is what you were talking about. Okay. As we have expressed before, it is important for your happiness and satisfaction that you recognize and understand your highest, truest self. Your highest self should be the guiding light by which you make decisions and live your life. Your holding communion with your highest self should be your ultimate goal. Often as humans live their life, they switch their guiding light to others. Decisions become based on things other than your highest self. These unbalanced relationships can then become the basis on which decisions are made. This happens unconsciously and alters your feelings. It begins to inform decisions away from your highest self's best interests and focus on the best interests of something else or your perceived best interest based on something other than yourself. Most of my existence. (laughs) Most of everybody's. Whoa. That's what I've been waking up to in the last year, where those decisions came from. There are, look, I'm going to keep reading. Yeah. There are four basic types of altered relationships outside of a relationship with your highest self. We're going to go over that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Not in detail. uh, This is me talking. Uh, So we're not going to go over them in detail. Okay. I think later on, they'll, they want to do an episode, a lesson on each of the attachments and each of their, their understanding of relationship alterations. Okay. Which I think is really... Girl, Katie's not ready for that. <laughs> We're going to go a little slower for her. Okay. So there are four basic types of altered relationships outside of a relationship with your highest self. Relationship to self, relationship to others, relationship to future, and relationship to past. 
It is beyond the scope of this lesson to describe them fully, but know that these are common and happen without conscious decision. For example, when you become focused away from your highest self and your past becomes your guiding light, you make decisions based on that relationship. You hear an inner voice that guides your actions towards satisfaction of that relationship fear. versus the one with yourself. That's fear. Yeah. I'm afraid that this pattern will repeat or... Or this lesson has happened in the past. This is what I've learned from it. This is where I was in the past. I need to get back to the past. I need to get back to how I feel. Or the past was terrible. I need to avoid the past at all costs. So I'm making wow. decisions. And so the past becomes your guiding principle. Ooh, okay. It's a lot. So that saying living in the past is true. It's <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot though, right? I mean, it's deep. Um, Let's see, the decisions and actions made from this relationship will not result in long-term happiness and satisfaction. These decisions and actions will end in not meeting your goals and not moving you toward greater communion with others and yourself. It is important to recognize the areas in your life that are not satisfying or peaceful and question how you are in communion with yourself in these situations. Are you listening to your true intuition or are you placing a relationship outside of your highest self as the neutral point in these areas? Sorry, central point in these areas. Areas of strife and struggle in your life often indicate a deviation from your connection from your truest self. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I think, I think a lot of us live that way. And it's like that generational cycles continue and continue and continue. Yes. And I think what's important to understand too is it's not like you either are paying attention to your highest self and everything is beautiful or you're not and everything is terrible. There are areas of your life that are going to be really easy and satisfying and free flowing. And there's going to be areas of your life that are not. And there are pieces, there are parts that we really know how to hear our inner self, our highest self, and there's areas where we do not. And it's really easy to tell the difference because the areas that we struggle with that are a constant problem for us, that are not satisfying or frustrating or never seem to come to fruition for us and we work hard at them and they still never work out the way we want them to. Or That's they where we're not operating out of our intuition. Correct. Uh-oh, and inventory time. Exactly. And it will always point to, well, I have a misguided relationship. My relationship target, my guiding light, my compass is no longer my highest self in this situation. It's something else. Survival, avoidance. Well, there's a number of things, right? There's so I know this. You don't know this yet. I do not. But there's four different relationships. Okay. Three different realms. And I think six different attachments. And the combination of those three things will determine what your problem is with any frustration in your life. That's a different episode, right? Yeah, it's a number of different. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make me want to come back, James. This is a lot today. So you know this because you've used my deck. So I have channeled the deck of release. And this is the Council of Lights, like big project they gave to me is it's like a kind of like an Oracle deck where you think of a problem that your struggle that you're having in your life, relationship, money, job, house, whatever, any area of frustration that you have and you pull from these different decks and they identify where this problem, where you're being guided incorrectly, where your relationship is askew, what attachment you have yeah. that's askew um, and what realm it's living in. And we'll talk about the realms in a later episode. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really instrumental because it helps identify where, where you're breaking down and you have this recognition of, holy shit, I totally, yes, you've done them. Do you think that one day we can have people call in and we could do the deck? Sure. Ooh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> like, that'd be cool. It would be, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the ultimate goal is to get this deck out there when I've got the resources and time and all that stuff to get it done. But, um, yeah, so this is what they're talking about. These are the four relationship pieces okay. what, that take us away from this is our guiding light. Okay. And I, I mean, I feel that I, I can look back on my life and see where I did that. Yeah. So not with regret, 
obviously that was part of the, the process for me, but with, oh, I see why. We all do it. Yeah. We all do it. And I mean, it, it, I am right there. I am in no way, like, I don't feel like I'm given any sort of, you know, free pass from being a total human. I am 100% a total human, like in every sense of the word. And I get to make all the same mistakes and I continue to make those same mistakes. Um, even with them, me hearing them in a different way than most people hear them. They, you know, I still make those mistakes. Yeah. It just happens. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Your intuition is the awakening, the strumming of your true connection to the higher plane, to your highest self. The more connected and aware you are of that connection, the better your intuition will play in leading you down the correct path, the path toward connection, communion, and satisfaction. How do you recognize the true intuition from the false notions of security? This is the challenge as they feel similar. It is similar to understanding the difference between hitting a glass that is empty versus hitting a glass that is full. One resonates and lingers and the other stops short and is limited. This is merely an example, but speaks to the true resonance with your highest self connected to the greater universe and a connection to the physical world. Examine your desires and wants. Examine the things in your life that are not going well or are not moving in the direction that you desire. Now compare them to the something in your life that work well, what is satisfying and easy. That is the difference. So it's sitting in that contrast of your actual lived experiences to get like a starting point. Yes. For like trying to dissect and understand. Yes, that feeling. Okay. Plainly said, intuition is the openness to your highest self and comparing it to the world around you. Say that one more time. Plainly said, intuition is the openness to your highest self and comparing it to the world around you. Okay. That comparison will lead to knowledge, information, and guidance. Practice connection to your highest self. Sit alone and practice letting go of all thoughts. Imagine your energy, the energy that is you, flying straight up and feeling the guidance around you. Spend time feeling the peace. Think on your life and feel what is easy and peaceful and satisfying. Compare that to what is not working well. What is stressful and frustrating and limiting? Notice the difference. Recognize how you are separate from the stressful things in your life, that you exist above them, separate from them. Use this feeling as a way to recognize your highest self. No, you cannot get it wrong. We are here with you always. So I feel like I need to explain a little bit. Please. So in that practice, what they, they talk about feeling the difference, right? So we can look back at our life and go, oh, this feeling of when I did this, I felt satisfied and connected and at ease. Mm. And these other areas feel frustrating and limiting and like I'm not going anywhere. Okay. And so we can feel those different experiences in our body, in our experience. Mm -hmm. And when they do this meditation to help you connect and recognize your highest self, they want you to sit, close your eyes, take your moment to, to become present however long you need. You know, I really feel the need to emphasize when they give instructions they are kind of specific but they're also they also want you to understand that like you do you like your intention of what you want to achieve when you close your eyes and meditate is really what's going to happen okay and um so sit whatever you need to do to get yourself present take your time connect to your higher self or, or connect to peace and relaxation and then imagine your energetic self shooting up from the top of your head into the sky and existing up there and just feeling what that's like. Feel supported, feel the presence of energy around you. If you want it to feel like guidance, if you want it to feel like anything, feel the presence of support around you, okay? Then at that point, then you can start to think about 
the different parts of your life that is satisfying and the ones that are frustrating. Mm. And the difference is you will feel connected and a part of the satisfying, loving, open, connected experiences in your life and areas of your life. And you will feel separate from the frustrating, less satisfying, harder parts of your life. And the connection is that to intuition and self. Yes. And then you can understand what that feeling feels like so that when you're struggling in other areas of your life, you can readjust and maybe sit with the feeling of that higher self and see if that could be, you could be paying more attention to those, that the way you make a decision from that lens. Yes. And what they're really pointing out is the areas that are frustrating, you aren't a part of. Okay. They exist separately from you, but the things that are satisfying, you are a part of. Because those were made, those decisions or that connection was made from your highest self. So it just inherently breeds the connection. Yes. Whereas those other parts aren't connected to self, so you can't actually be connected to them because they're not connected to self. 100%. And that when you, when you spend time, five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, it's not like you need to spend hours in meditation. It's just noticing the edges of it. Can you notice the edge? Can you understand? Can you tap into that feeling that I am connected versus not? And once you tap into that enough, you will then begin to recognize it in the world around you a lot more easily. Mm. And when you feel connected, that's when your intuition gets to go, oh, I'm, I'm feeling connected to that. Okay. Versus not feeling connected. I'm trying to jam this through because my intuition, my beliefs on how I need to satisfy this relationship other than myself. How am I going to satisfy that instead of how am I connected to my highest self? So I, so it's homework. <laughs> I'm going to sit with that. It's uh, yeah, it is. But home- I like that the practical application to it. And I love that it doesn't have to be two hours or whatever. It can just be five minutes of attention to connection of self and noticing the discrepancy when we're not. Yes. And it can really just be that. Absolutely. It's not, it's driving your car to work. It's walking to work. It's uh, your lunch break. It is in the shower. It is, it's not a uh, lugubrious, I love that word, uh, hard demanding process. Again, you can find it in the joy. You can learn just as much in the joy as you can in the pain. It doesn't need to be a lot of work. I can't emphasize that's the key. That's something they say over and over again. Don't make it so much work. Recognize that you can have that connection because you want to, you set your intention to, and you can learn less in that way. But that, I think it's a really good practice for people just to start recognizing yeah. What are the areas that I feel connected to? And what are the, the frustrating areas that I do not feel connected to that don't belong to me, that are separate from me mm. and start how to handle them differently. And and we will go into further down the line about um, the deck and the relationships and They're attachments like, and realms. Sure. <laughs> yeah. No, because we'll get to, we'll get to practice and we'll do a reading on you and we'll do Ooh. all those things. Okay. And, um, it's powerful and it's, it's resonant. And every time I've done the cards with someone or I've given them to people to, to use, uh, they always have the same information. Like this was incredibly powerful. I had no idea. And it was incredibly accurate. Yeah. I'm excited. I've done them with you and I'm excited to do it again. Yeah. It's, yeah. they're really, they're really, I was, you know, it's funny. They would say, okay, this is what when you do. I'm like, Oh, what? And they just gave me this information. I literally had no idea that it would even make sense. Yeah. They were just giving me it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so they're typing it. And, and it wasn't until I actually like put them together and made the cards and, and, and put it all together that I went, Oh my God. Like now I understand I wasn't, I didn't understand any of this until Ooh. it wasn't like they gave me the big picture. It's like, just all came together. It just said here, here are the, here are the relationship cards. Here are the retachment cards. Here are the realm. I'm like, what, what? 
I don't understand. What's the difference between an attachment and a relationship? And it was just, so it was a huge surprise to me that when I actually put them together, it worked. I wasn't surprised at all. (laughs) (laughs) It's uh, but it was a journey, but I think, um, Again, that lesson is in tune with your higher self and here they're really giving you an idea about how to do that. Yeah. How to start putting in the practice of tuning into yourself, recognizing the areas in your life that are not going well, which everyone has those areas, (laughs) and start to just feel into are you connected? And then when you encounter those areas in your life, and you can even just think about them, you don't have to be in the moment. That's the other thing too. You don't have to be in the moment. You don't have to be in the moment of a discussion with your partner that is not going well and is frustrating and expect to be in this higher plane of existence. Yeah, it's more like going back. It, it, you review it. Yeah. You get to review it and go, oh, I feel how I deviated there. Yeah. Or I feel that I don't feel connected to that response. I feel more connected to this response. Makes and sense. that is where you begin to learn. Learning in the moment. Humans are, yeah, humans yeah. aren't so hot on that. Yeah. Um, but um, so that's intuition lesson. Lesson on intuition. Big one to digest. It is a big one. Yeah, I'll probably have to listen to this episode multiple times. Great. Feel, feel free. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm excited to see what you text me for next week. <laughs> so I'll have to look at my list. We'll see if I come back. <laughs> we'll yeah. see the list they gave me. So in the meantime, everyone have a great week. I'm James. I'm Katie. And uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.